I didn't mean for it to happen. I swear I didn't. Me and Lainey and Nate just wanted to see the body before they put her in the ground. We wanted a private moment with her before the big shivang. We live in a small town, and it wasn't too hard to sneak our three selves into the morgue, especially since Nate's dad is part of the corpse cleanup crew, and Nate has sticky fingers. We were creeping through the halls, hardly making a sound besides the quiet squeak of rubber shoes on spotless tile flooring. I knew there was no one to hear us anyway, no one living that is. All I could smell was this yucky chemical tang that stuck to the back of my throat like glue. Lainey was hugging my arm tight, saying she didn't think this was such a good idea after all, and that maybe we should go back home. And wasn't it getting kinda late? Lainey liked to wear a fake-looking emerald ring on her right hand that she swore up and down to anyone who would listen that it was real. Boy did I hate that thing more than ever as it dug into the soft flesh of my forearm. I was so, so close to prying her vice-like grip from my skin, but I didn't say anything. I knew she was just scared. She was having second thoughts about seeing our sister like that. I think. You know, not alive. Nate shushed Laney as us three crowded around a large metal door labeled Processing. He grinned at us as he whipped out his father's plastic keycard. It was an odd grin, as if he didn't know if he should be smiling or not. I suppose my returning smile was much the same as his. Smiling just felt wrong somehow. Like how could we still smile when the dead couldn't anymore? When Cassie couldn't? Nate took a shaky breath and turned back to the door. He slid the keycard into the slot and the small red light by the handle flipped to green with a pleasant chirp. Nate started pushing the handle and opened the door a crack, but paused and looked at Laney and I. You guys still want to do this? He whispered. Yes, we said simultaneously. Nate just rolled his eyes and muttered, triplets. After a pause, I saw his eyes go wide as he realized what he said. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. It's fine. I said, blinking down at my shoes, Lainey giving my arm a squeeze before she finally let go. Nate was still blubbering apologies, but I didn't hold it against him. After all, he'd lost someone too. I always thought that Nate and Cassie would get married one day. We all did. I rubbed a fist against my eye angrily, pressing until I saw tiny spots of color behind my lids. Let's just go inside, Nate, I said, looking up at him. Cassie's waiting for us. At my gentle touch, the door swung silently open. I knew I was eating my words when I hesitated at the threshold. An icy wind blew from the dark interior of the morgue, curling around my neck and licking down my spine. I shoved down the feeling of foreboding, along with its accompanying shiver, and stepped into the room. I felt along the wall for a light switch, not so much hearing as sensing Nate and Laney enter behind me. This room seemed to swallow sound, and the world seemed muffled with such an absence of noise. Hey, hey, Christy, Laney whispered. I think I found the light. The morgue walls ate up Laney's voice hungrily, leaving us in too much silence again. I heard a sort of winding noise before the lights flickered to life, too intense for such a small space. I had to give my eyes a moment or two to adjust before looking around the room. There was a small sink along one wall, along with a large tub surrounded by various bottles and chemicals. I didn't want to think about what it was used for. In the center of the room were two metal operating tables, far too clean looking for what they were used for. A small wheelie cart covered in a bunch of sharp tools rested in between the two tables. None of this caught my attention for more than a second though. My eyes were instead drawn to the far wall. Twelve metal doors faced me in two rows of six. I was struck by a sudden burst of adrenaline as I realized I would have to open one of those doors. My hands began to shake. Christy, look. This light switch is really weird. It's on a timer or something. I set it to 10 minutes. Is that okay? Chris. I couldn't process any of Laney's annoying jabber. I was just staring at those metal doors. They seemed to get bigger and bigger until they consumed my vision completely. Death was beyond them. I could feel it. Someone clapped me on the shoulder and I jumped. Yo, Christy, are you still with us? 
Nate murmured near my ear. We can still go back, you know. I shook his hand off my shoulder. No. No. I need to see her. I approached the closest door on the bottom left. The only door with a label. Written in bold, blocky letters was the name Cassie Porter. I could almost feel her in there. I could almost imagine her breathing just behind that wall of metal. Laney. I said, this is her. Laney was sort of cowering on the other side of the metal operating table. She slunk a little closer, but I could see the building horror in her eyes. So it was now or never. Before I could give Laney a chance to talk me out of it, I tugged the handle on the door and it swung open, clanging against the wall loudly. All three of us jumped at the sound. Jesus Christ. Christy. Nate howled, looking pale. Sorry. I said but my attention was on the figure beneath the sheet in front of me. Gently, reverently, I pulled the tray out of the open doorway until the loose outlines of Cassie's body beneath the sheet were revealed. Nate, I noticed, had taken a step or two away from the body, but Lenny's hands were already moving over the planes of Cassie's face. Lenny, I whispered hoarsely. When she didn't respond, I saw the little wet spots dotting the sheet covering our sister. Laney's face was streaked with tears as she gripped the corners of the sheet and pulled it away from Cassie's face. I couldn't hold back a gasp. They hadn't exaggerated when they said it was brutal. Oh God, Nate said. Laney didn't react. Her fingers traced the outline of the bloodless, shredded tissue around Cassie's waxy lips, her gaudy emerald ring winking in the harsh fluorescence. She kissed the pale cheeks and wept above the closed lids. I tried not to compare Cassie's face to mine or Laney's identical one. So similar even when death had robbed our sister of that spark she had in life. Nate sighed and I saw the tension leave his bunched shoulders. He joined Lenny, reaching under the white sheet to grip Cassie's corpse fingers. And yet, I couldn't bring myself to take a step nearer. That wasn't Cassie anymore. I knew in my heart then that she was gone. That was a decomposing body a cadaver. It wasn't Cassie anymore. The lights flickered for a moment then. Nate and Laney looked at each other and then up at the lights before they flickered again. So I was the only one who saw it happen. I was the only one who instantly realized. I was the only one watching when Cassie's eyes flick open in the gloom. We need to go, I whispered, unable to find my voice. I really tried to warn them. I really did. It was like someone had glued my throat shut though. All I could manage was a tiny whisper. My sister was still looking confusedly at the lights, saying something about the timer, something about the 10 minutes running out. Nate, I saw, had already realized, but he still wasn't moving. Cassie, he said, his eyes wild, scanning her face. Cassie, my eyes were locked on the corpse. Her eyes were milky the warm hazel brown that I had always known completely filmed over. It was like she had cataracts or something. She was staring blankly at the ceiling, and I tried to make myself believe that her eyes had already been open, even as I backed toward the exit. Laney still hadn't noticed the change, the sudden tension in the air. Christy, she said, we need to reset the timer on the lights. I tried to speak, but all that came out was a tiny squeak. The lights flickered again, but this time they caught the light of the metal door we had pulled Cassie's body out of. It was coated in scratches, countless gouges in the metal like someone had been trying to claw their way out. I looked down at Cassie's hand, the one Nate was still gripping. The nails were hanging by mere threads of flesh, the fingers bent and covered in deep bloodless gashes. I don't know how I didn't see it before. Cassie, I whispered helplessly. Cassie. Nate met my stare, his eyes as wide as mine. That was the last thing I saw before there was a click, and the room was plunged into darkness. Never in my life had I felt such paralyzing fear, never had I felt like such a sitting duck before, there in the dark. Laney? I said hoarsely, still struggling to find my voice. Nate. I could hardly hear anything over the pounding of my heart. In and out, in and out in and out. I couldn't seem to get catch my breath. I put both hands over my mouth and tried to breathe through my nose. That was when I heard a loud crash from the other side of the room. 
It sounded like someone had run into the metal cart of surgical instruments. I heard some tools skittering across the tiles. When the echoes faded away, a heavy silence seemed to hang over the room. I knew the door was somewhere at my back, and I wanted to bolt for it so badly, but I couldn't leave Nate and Lenny behind. Instead, I began to feel my way backwards, sort of scooting back towards where I knew the light switch would be. If I could make it, if I could just turn on the light, Cassie's body would be exactly where it was, eyes closed. I would realize that it was just Lainey being clumsy, running into the operating cart, and we would all have a little nervous laugh about it. My hands were trembling as I slid myself along the floor. My sneakers squeaked as I pushed myself back, the sound despairingly loud. I froze, holding my breath. I wanted to tell myself I was being silly, that it was just me, Nate, Lainey, and a dead body in that room that I hadn't seen my sister's corpse open her eyes, that those scratches were really just a trick of the light. But I couldn't, and so I held my breath and shut my eyes, too paralyzed with fear to move. I couldn't hear anyone else in the room, only my heartbeat in my ears. Minutes or hours or years must have gone by as I sat there on the floor. I was shaking violently at that point, but I finally decided that it was safe to move. I picked myself up and crawled on all fours in the direction of the light switch, one hand outstretched in front of me. My fingers finally brushed against something and I felt a surge of relief, thinking it was the wall. I reached out again, excitedly only to find my hand wrapping around something that felt stiff and cold and so, so very wrong. A leg. It was a leg. It was her leg. I just knew it was her. I didn't pause for a second. One minute I was gripping my sister's corpse and the next I was running, my fingers ripping through something that felt too much like knotted hair, feeling vaguely the sensation of something snagging and tearing through my shirt. I fumbled blindly for the door. I couldn't think beyond the panic. When I finally felt the handle beneath my fingertips, I flung the door open and bolted. Flying down the hallway at full speed, some niggling awareness made it past the adrenaline coursing through my system, and I realized I could hear pounding footsteps behind me. My breath was coming in short spurts and whimpers, but I tried to push myself even faster. I couldn't let that thing catch me. The thing that used to be my sister. The footsteps were coming closer, quickly gaining on me. At the end of the hall, I could just make out the large exit sign, but I knew I wouldn't make it. And so when I passed a door without a card reader, I didn't think. I practically threw myself through the open door. I slammed it shut behind me and fumbled in the darkness for something to block it with. Finding nothing nearby, I pushed myself against the door, bracing myself for the inevitable. Through the frosted glass, I could see a shadow approaching, and I tensed, my heart in my throat. The figure paused in front of the door, and I saw the vague shape of its hand raising up. It all felt very anticlimactic when I heard two soft knocks on the door outside. Christy, said a voice. It's me. Nate, open up. I only hesitated for a second before slowly opening the door. Nate tumbled inside, and I quickly closed the door behind him. Where's Lainey? I said breathlessly. Nate only looked at me. His chest was heaving, and his ginger hair was sticking up in odd directions. Isn't she with you? I thought I saw her up ahead. A sick feeling began to grow in my stomach. My last sister, my only sister. I left her. I shoved Nate out of the way and wrenched the door open. I didn't know which way to go, so I just started running for the exit, Nate on my heels, hoping that Lainey was already outside. When I crashed through the exit door, I was frantic. I looked around wildly, but couldn't see anything in the gloom. Nate had caught up to me, and he and I scanned the parking lot, but neither of us could pick out much of anything in the dark. I was about to suggest that we go back inside to look for Lainey when an arm reached out to my left and wrapped around my wrist. I couldn't help it. I shrieked. It was only after that I realized the figure in the dark was laughing. Lainey. I yelled. You idiot. You scared the shit out of me. Gotcha, she smirked. Nate was still looking at her strangely. Where did you come from? I was right behind you guys, 
she said, staring at Nate like he'd grown three heads. Didn't you hear me calling? We hadn't. I definitely would have heard something as she had been screaming. In that moment though, I didn't really care, didn't really want to question. I just wanted to go home. And so that's what we did. Nate dropped Laney and I off at home, saying he'd see us at the funeral in two days. Laney and I tromped inside and I fell right into bed, wanting to forget all about morgues and dark hallways and walking corpses. The ceremony was beautiful. It was an open casket, and somehow they had managed to fix up Cassie enough to where the wounds weren't even noticeable. Laney and I sat up front with our parents and Nate sat right behind us, one hand on my shoulder and the other on Laney's. When our dad went up to say some words about Cassie, he was so choked up he could barely speak through his tears. Laney gripped my hand in hers, and I felt tears coming on fast and hot. My eyes were on my sister's body. She looked so serene and pretty. Someone had added some blush to her cheeks, giving the illusion that she was merely sleeping. It was hard to imagine the nightmare of two nights ago. Laney, Nate, and I agreed that it had all been in our heads. Some trick of the flickering lights and just the general fear created by being in a creepy morgue. I looked at Cassie still, pale fingers interlocked on her stomach. The bright sunlight streaming in through the church's stained glass windows made the emerald ring on her finger wink and glimmer. Laney's ring. I paused when I saw it. I don't know why it didn't register immediately. I glanced down at my hand in Laney's, who I thought was Laney. I looked up at her face and saw she was looking back at me, her expression oddly blank. Her eyes looked sort of cloudy, something I hadn't noticed until now. I thought about the last two days, how Laney had been shut up in her room, only ever coming out to take her meals. I assumed it had been from grief. Laney? I whispered. Her cold, cold fingers gripped mine a bit tighter, and she smiled.